Hi and hello and welcome to another installment of Mad Jackal Labs and I will be your host, teacher and guide, Dr. Johnny Hellfire. And today I wanted to show off a new little toy I got in the mail. Yes, I know it looks like the same kind of Raspberry Pi Zero, but this is a new one with the camera attachment. Ooh. So instead of just doing your normal, oh, here's the camera, here's how you look at it, oh my, there it goes. We'll have to go back for you. Anyways, yeah, we're not going to do a video like that. Instead, I'm going to show you how to build a nifty little piece of equipment that will also double as something I will use for future investigations and paranormal investigations. Yeah, that was redundant. I don't care! <laughs> so, anyways, what we're going to do is we're basically going to make a Wi-Fi streaming camera with motion detection and capture. So that way you can see different things. What you'll need, and the links will be down below for all this stuff, is one Raspberry Pi Zero with camera module. You will need an adapter cable that will go from regular size to the much smaller connection here and then you will also need a camera which basically yeah link down below you'll need Wi-Fi adapter of course an micro SD card and these lovely little adapters for the micro USB ah dropping stuff here USB connection and then your other new doodads and knickknacks like your USB hub and your power cable. And these are for later, I'll show you, but there's a point. Anyways, first, unlike what you normally do, well, it's the same procedure, but not the same OS, we will skip over to the computer and basically I will show you what you do first with this little beauty. Focus, focus, there we go, uh, and here we go. So first you will need the Motion IOS. This is where you get it, download it, right here, link down below. Then you will need a way to put it on the SD card, I like this one, and if you have Windows, there's this one, link below. Now. What you do is you basically can watch the video on my setup for other Raspberry Pis and it basically shows you how to use this one if you're Mac inclined. But I'm basically going to be just skipping ahead so if you want to go check out that go down below. But yes, it's already loaded, here we go. Now. First, we'll assemble everything after you get the card ready, of course. And I also forgot to mention, you will need one of these, because the Raspberry Pi Zero doesn't come with an Ethernet connection, so you kind of need that to get this to work properly and everything. But, basically, yes cheap easy and I've had this for years and it works perfectly now some people say go ahead and use a Raspberry Pi 2 here or 3 because they take SD cards as well and we'll come back to this one but eh, if you don't have one already and you just want a quick easy way and plus let's be honest it's a good idea to have one of these around because well let's face it if you have it and don't need it. It's a lot different than if you need it and don't have it. And trust me, I'd rather have it and not need it. Yeah, I know. I'm a little crazy. And also, you will learn how to attach a camera to the Raspberry Pi Zero as well. So, put the lime in the coconut and coconut and lime, or however it goes. Uh, yeah, put the uh, shiny side in facing the camera and push down on the piece should lock into place easily enough ah. I hope you saw that ah. and then the other end again shiny side down on the board push it in lock it in and huzzah 
a dangly bit. Wah. So, if you want to see how I did the rest of that, like this and that and all that, just watch my other tutorial, you know. But, yes, I plugged in, as you notice, the Wi-Fi and the Ethernet. You'll, it'll be all the more obvious once I get down the road. And I took those very, very suspicious looking twist ties and I affixed this to it. So that way it's not dangling about like nuts in the wind. Nobody needs that. So, yes, okay. We have the power source set up. We press the button. Here, I'll let you watch me press the button. And click. Now, you want to wait until everything sets up, gets going, and basically finishes. It will take a few minutes, but you'll be able to know whether or not it begins or starts or if any of this makes any sense by the little red light on the camera. So at this point you're probably wondering what this lunatic is rambling on about. Well you have the camera now you want to actually view what's on it. So what you need to do first is basically find an awesome app like you know what is this called again? iNet. Yes iNet. Yes, it's awesome. And it will tell you everything you need to know, and you don't need to see what's on my network. So keep your nose out of it. Anyways, once you get that up and running, it will tell you which, you know, IP address you need to type in, because that's how this works through your network. And basically, I've already typed mine in. You hit enter. And. 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 Yawn and Babu, you have a fully working camera. Yes, it's very slow. Ha ha ha, you got to peek at me for a moment. Anyways, if you need to. Oh, there we go. See that high definition dust? Yes, ooh, the big money's here. Now, basically, when you first start up, just need to put in admin. Hit enter. There's no password until you set one. And then go over here and go down here. Set up the camera device, so on and so forth. The motion detection, the obnoxious neighbor with the car alarm that won't stop beaking. Ah, ah anyways. So, what you'll need to do is go to network. Put that down and basically add your network name and password and then apply anything. Yeah. Don't do advanced camera settings or faster camera settings or whatever the hell that thing was called because honestly, it sucks. And it takes away all your awesome little features like timestamp and so on and so forth. So, anyways. Now that you have this all set up, you can check for updates, change the username and password, so on and so forth. You can either have it take pictures or just straight stream and even record whenever it picks up a bit of motion. I advise you to try it out for yourself. It's pretty awesome. And up here, you would be able to add more cameras. So if you had like three or four Raspberry Pis set around with cameras, even USB ones work, which I will be trying sometime in the near future. You can basically have a whole network just watching them like some creepy security guard in your own home. Get a hobby. Anyways, that's about it. It's pretty cool. I'm going to do more with it. And basically, yeah, but let's see the more stripped down, streamlined version of it first before I depart. And yes, there it is, all small and tiny and streamlined, except for you still have a long cable sticking out of it and this bad boy right here, which I intend on improving on in further episodes, like adding a battery pack and maybe getting it to where this doesn't stick out of the side and... Basically, maybe getting a case for it. And then, 
when I actually start doing my paranormal investigations, you may see a cameo of a few of these little bad boys. And then also, you know, I will need my own wireless network, and a lot of these places won't have any. You know, that's a good idea for another episode. How about we see about making our own portable wireless network? Why not? Shit. I'm down. Well, anyways, as you know, this has all been an experiment. All the links are down below. And... Like. Subscribe. Thank you.